Okay, hello, this is Dr. James, and today we're going to use our ratty code of gamma ray spectrometer. Let's turn that thing on. There we go. There we go. To measure some thorium dioxide. And uh, just trying to build up a complete uh, known spectrum so I can uh, use the spectrum if I want to find an unknown. Uh, I can look at the known spectrums and uh, compare it to that. And so today is going to be thorium. Very cool, huh? Okay, again, I separated my material that I'm trying to measure uh, quite a distance from um, my other sources because you see, uh, these uh, gamma ray spectrometer scintillators are very sensitive and I don't want interference from my other sources. Okay, so I'm running this in the basement. And uh, we'll see how that turns out. Should be interesting. Okay, so let's go into our radio code. And uh, we've been running our spectrum for about eight days, which is what I've been running the other ones at. But this one has a much higher count rate, so the signal to noise is really good on this one. And um, let me let me just do this. I'm going to go in and subtract off the background, although I probably don't need to. Okay. And let's just look at the spectrum. And so this thorium spectrum looks very different than the other spectrums I've taken so far. Okay, so let's start with this peak. So there seems to be a peak at um, 2574 keV. That's a thallium 208. And that's in the decay chain of thorium. And it, see it has lines for the other peaks associated with thorium. AC uh, 228 is uh, 1588 kilovolts. I, I'm sorry, the other one. Let's take a look at the other one. I guess the other one should have been two, 2614. Okay. Okay. Just remember, if you saw my first video, the calibration on this is a little bit off, and I talked about that, how... Um, you probably have to fix the calibration. So uh, here's another peak of thorium, AC228, 911 keV. So, so the one uh, is what the peak is supposed to be, and the other one is what it's measured at. So if you look at, you know, let me bring it back to log scale, kind of slide the cursor slowly. The one in parentheses is where the cursor is actually at. Okay. Okay, so that's a 911 keV, and we'll go to this peak right here, which is another thorium-232 decay chain, thallium-208, and it's supposed to be a 583 keV. And uh, there's another AC peak, AC-228, at 338 keV. And all these peaks seem to be very clear. And there is another, uh, this is lead 212, and it's in the thorium decay chain. And it looks like there's a peak very low here. Oh, that lead 212 was at 238 uh, keV. And uh, I suspect these are probably K-shell transitions that are all kind of lumped together in that, that low peak there. And uh, I was kind of looking at some of these other things in here. I suspect that there might be a little uranium in this sample because I'm seeing some peaks that might be associated with uh, radium. See, like right there, uh, where was it? Oh, maybe that's a thorium peak. So this, these peaks here were not thorium though. They, they appear to be radium and radon, radium 226, which is in the decay chain of uh, uranium. So if those are real peaks there, there might be some uranium in there, possibly. But uh, definitely a very different spectrum from uranium or radium or any of these uh, americium that I've looked at so far. Very cool, huh? So by taking these unknowns, I should be able to, or uh, taking these known uh, spectrum, I should be able to, uh, if someone gave me an unknown that had some of these elements in it, I should be able to determine, oh yeah, it looks like this spectrum or that. And this thorium 
has what a whole bunch of peaks one two three four five six six strong peaks there okay anyway very cool so i guess that will conclude our uh, thorium and uh probably be taking some more spectrum of different things okay so here we go here is a our chart of nucleides and remember um the number of neutrons changes as it, it goes up in this direction and the number of protons changes in this direction so it's protons versus neutrons and um, of course the, when, as the protons change it changes the elements and we're talking about element uh, what, what element is this this is thorium I forget what element this is one of the um, one of the uh, most abundant uh, uh, radioactive isotopes found in nature Thorium, uh, you know, they have done research on uh, thorium reactors, and um, it, it's very promising. Unfortunately, they s s cut the research because anything that looks like it might uh, lead to uh, a viable uh, technological solution for uh, the common person to have a nuclear power plant in their house or their car or something like that. You know, they, they don't want that. They want to control all the power. And uh, energy is power. In fact, it's going to be the new currency of the future. If you uh, s study the technocracy that they're trying to set up under uh, the new world order, uh, they want to make uh, energy the, the new currency, and they want to have a monopoly on that. And so they don't want the common people to have the means to generate their own electricity, their own power. Remember, energy is capital. And thorium was proven to be a inherently safe uh, reactor. They were using a, a liquid thorium, um, beryllium, lithium uh, salt reactor, and if it overheated, the uh, reactor core would uh, shut down, so it was impossible for it to over overheat or melt down. And so it looked really promising, so they shut down the, uh, the research on that like they always do. Anyway, so thorium, a very cool element. Very long half-life here. Here's our, um, let's just look at the stats here. So it's element 230, or uh, isotope 232. Um, I guess it's element 90. Z is 90, and N is, so Z is the number of neutr uh, neutron, or uh, protons, and neutrons is 142. Does that add up right? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, yep, okay. So element 232, and it has a half-life of, so they claim, I don't know how they measure it that accurately, 1.4 times 10 to the 10th year is a very long time. So it's very stable, and if it's very stable, it means it's not very radioactive. So what you're going to actually see is uh, probably the daughter products, which are more radioactive. And um, looks like it mainly decays by alpha decay. Of course... Gamma is a um, form of decay, but it doesn't change the number of uh, neutrons or protons. It just comes along with the uh, other types of particle decays. Ga gamma is a photon. Uh, some people claim that photons are particles, but it's not really the same as, uh, you know, it doesn't carry mass or charge or anything like uh, neutrons or pr alpha particles, beta particles, etc. So, Really, this is alpha decay, and it will, of course, alpha decay down to and over two, so it goes two on a diagonal to radium. So, uh, let's take a look at the thorium spectrum that we measured. Okay. Okay, again, I imported the uh, thorium spectrums that I have from my uh, gamma ray spectrometer into not Microsoft, because I run Linux. I hate Bill Gates. He's an evil person, pushing his evil injections upon people to murder them, and uh, pushing his rotten software. AB, what is it? ABS, anything but Microsoft. ABM. Anything but Microsoft. So I use uh, OpenOffice, or LibreOffice, I guess it is. And you can actually get that on Windows, too, which I encourage you to not use Microsoft products or including the lethal injections our Bill Gates products anyway so here, here is uh, our spectrum 
this is the log. I plot it as log. I go in here and let's say uh, one, of, one of these is log and one of these is linear. Okay, that's linear, that's log. Anyway, so here's the log spectrum and this is uh, in uh, KeV. So this is three megavolts of energy right here. One megavolt. And uh, here is the linear scale. And uh, let me let me just I'm plotting these against. I've been trying to compare these because we'd like to um, you know I've already taken uh, radium, americium, and uranium, so we're going to add thorium to this plot over here. And so we have these four here, and there's not a lot of activity up here, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And so, so we can see these peaks. They actually have unique peaks, so you can determine. Um, what an unknown is if you have an unknown. Now one thing I notice is this lower peak here <clears throat> is the same for uh, thorium and uranium and I suspect that my sample probably has some uranium in it as well so maybe that's why I'm getting a peak here. So remember thorium is the blue trace now and uranium is green. Okay, But if you look at these upper peaks up here they definitely have different upper peaks here and different type of spectrum in this upper range. So I suspect this is probably some uranium mixed in with my thorium, but that's fine I guess, you know. It's uh, tough to get that type of material and it's good to have for an experiment. Some are exp really interesting experiments on uh, nuclear physics. Okay, so here I zoomed in a little bit more and again the blue is the thorium spectrum. And I suspect that there's some uranium in there because these two peaks are the same. The green one is the uranium. But these two peaks are definitely different. And so you could, um, if you had an unknown, you could say, well, this is this is thorium. It has a definitely resolvable peak that's different than the uranium peak up here. And of course, these spectrum are very different than um, the radium and the uh, uh, americium spectrum. That we have here. Americium is kind of cool because it just has low energy gamma there and nothing else up here. Maybe that's why they use it in smoke detectors. I don't know. Anyway, very cool. So we'll keep on if you guys are interested. I'm going to make a whole bunch more spectrum of different isotopes, radioisotopes that I have. And I'll be, uh, as I get time, I'll be making videos on those. And then we'll be doing some cool experiments. Some some cool nuclear experiments. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, this is uh, Dr. Janes, and thanks for watching.